lovely to be with you on this Saturday morning. I had hoped for a little more sun, but uh, we're good. This is our sunshine right here, sun hour. So nice to be with you. Welcome. I'd love you to say hello. Um, personally, myself, I'll give you a little check-in. I am now uh, into 14 days of, of self-isolation, quarantine, and I feel amazing. I feel great. And I want to know how you're feeling. Give me a little check-in, a thumbs up. Um, I need a hug. Please, actually, if you need a hug, go ahead and share that. I'm also going to ask you today to um, put in the comments where you're listening from. I'd love to hear that. I do love getting these beautiful global messages of love. I'm just in someone in Holland someone in Australia, someone needing the connection. And if my voice can do that for 30 minutes, then it's my absolute pleasure. So thank you. Make sure to send me lots of hearts and love. It's Saturday morning. You've got your coffee with you. Now, a little bit of homework. Uh, please help me out with this. Um, I've got a project on. I recommend it for However, can you hear me okay? And is the music too much? Do you need me to turn the music down a bit? If somebody could just type that into the comments, this is about as interactive as it gets. <laughs> so let's see. Um, somebody's saying, oh, Dr. Rachel. Oh, that's my daughter. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Grace and Emerson. We miss you. Uh, miss you, miss you. Absolutely. Good morning, Carrie Ann. Thank you for your beautiful, loving note this morning. I may share a few um, comments from it. So we're doing great sound. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, today I wanted to chat with you about journaling. And the reason for that is because uh, I can guarantee, this is something I can guarantee, for the price of a pen and a piece of paper, a book, a notebook, you can change your life 100%. And right now, we are in something that has been predicted for eons by the sages and masters, that we are in the great change. So we're actually participating in history. We're, we're making history with what's happening on this planet right now. You, um, if you can move your mind into gifts that are coming, this is not a killing virus. This virus is... Something, it, it is killing, yes, and, and I don't mean to make light of that at all, but it is not meant to be a killing virus. It is meant to be a virus or um, a DNA tune-up, actually, that is changing how we are present on this planet. And the truth is the virus is actually protein, a little piece of protein that's coated in fat. Um, but but that's, we don't want the biochemistry and the science right now. What we want is to think about our minds, okay, and what is happening to our minds during this period of great change. So thank you for listening. If you're listening on the replay, and thank you for listening on replay, please go ahead and put hashtag replay, and also introduce yourself. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what's going on in your mind during these, um, these challenging times, these times that are asking a lot of us. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if uh, Carrie Ann, if it's all right with you, I know you're listening. Um, and I think your message that you sent me this morning and over the last couple of days is quite poignant for today. Uh, and this is why journaling can be so powerful. Um, Carrie Ann shared with me that she is, um, and I won't share, her piece, but it, it's been a real struggle, and that her emotions have been up and down, up and down. And I absolutely am aware because it's the same for me, and it's the same for my family members. It is absolutely true that we will one day be just fine, and then the next day we will not be fine. Um, and this is where the journaling comes in. I am a huge fan of journaling because this is a place where you get to write your story, where you get to tell your story. We don't do that anymore. We don't share our history. And since we're in the middle of unprecedented times where literally history is happening to us, it's a powerful moment to take advantage of the written word. We used to send letters and notes. We used to write. We don't do that anymore. And my um, 
my great mentor, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, claims that with journaling, through journaling, you can change every aspect of your life. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about that. Here are a couple of things um, about the journal. Oh, my goodness. Instagram seems to be even though I have great reception, pardon me, um, Gretchen, thank you very much for letting me know. Some of my words are skipping. Uh, maybe I should speak slower. Um, I'm having a very good, um, strong signal here, but I do understand that streaming sometimes can be challenging. So it, it may be a better reception on Instagram. I don't know. Just stay put, though. Just stay put, um, because there will be some moments here where you'll capture the critical words. And maybe I could get your participation while you're listening to me to type in something that I've said that, that resonates with you. For example, when I say journaling is a way to tell your story, you can type in the comments, tell your story. Um, you can, when I say we are in the middle of history and this is a moment for us to write and record our history, you can type that. Oh, awesome. Connection on Instagram is great. I feel like it's just because so many people are on Internet and streaming and it's just crazy times. So uh, thank you for your patience. And I'm going to try to take the fear of journaling out of you. And uh, so thank you very much for everybody working together. I do feel like we have such a beautiful community. The messages that are coming out are just amazing. So um, journaling. Journaling is science-backed to deliver health benefits. And right now, we need to maximize every small thing we can do and every great thing we can do to become immune strong. Now, uh, with my daughter, daughter, Dr. Rachel Cordetti, listening on this podcast or on this uh, message, she reminds me, reminds us that you cannot boost your immune system. That's impossible. We were born, as we went through the birth canal, with a fully, well, a fully functioning immune system that begins to develop over time as we're exposed to various stresses, stressors, and pathogens. That's normal. So all I can say is we can support our immune system. And anything we can do to support our immune system is going to be well received. We want it. So this is what journaling can do for you. Why? Because it's a healthy reframing of your experience. It's a place for you to take your, your words, your I, I'm a script place for you to take everything that's circulating in your brains, and just write it on paper, dump it. If that resonates with you, please thumbs up. And quickly now, if you know that someone should be listening to this message and think it will help them, someone who's struggling to make a connection, even if we're just doing it here verbally, please go ahead and tag them. Please do, because I think if we can help make sense of what's happening to us, through journaling experiences, through the healthy reframing of what's going on, we can feel more powerful and more capable of managing the hit that life has given us. And I want to also suggest to you that this is not the first uh, virus that will come to us and it won't be the last. So there will be more things. So getting into the habit of journaling every day for your mind's sake will be a very powerful wellness strategy. There's another thing that happens when you're journaling. You have an opportunity to create a picture of your future self. And for those of you who are just joining, my name is Tosca Reno. I am the Eat Clean Lady. Some of you call me the Butt Lady. But really, my passion is your wellness. And I'm hoping that my, my voice, which has stayed calm throughout these two weeks that have been uh, embroiled in, in the pandemic, uh, that, that I can share some of that calmness with you. Um, and I, I want the, the journaling session for you to feel like an open book experience where you can create your life. Uh, Einstein said that the power of imagination is far greater than thought and intelligence because it, imagination is asking you to go deep into things you cannot see. So you have an opportunity here to write the future story of yourself. What if you could use the pages of your journal to write the future story of yourself, to write the new words, the vision of what your future will look like. And here is where you get a chance to describe it. 
So journaling helps you become the creator of your forward-thinking vision. I'm going to give you an exercise in a moment. And uh, from Power versus Force, uh, um, David Hawkins, and also from Dr. Bruce Lipton, we know that thoughts create. So if you feel feeling every day to be in your mind and thoughts of fear, then that is exactly where the direction of your mind will go, and you will live a fearful experience. I know, because I did that. After Robert for years, and I could not shake it. I couldn't shake it until I started to reframe it. Again, the pages of your journal are a place for you to reframe your story, actually to tell your story and then reframe it so that instead of, oh my God, my husband died of cancer, he left me alone, how dare he do that? I can say, I see now the beauty of the experience of having known Robert and loved him deeply and of, of enjoying all the things that he exposed me to. I can now say, without his presence, I would not have learned that. And without his loss, I would not have learned all of these messages I'm now sharing with you. Um, I have learned to see the light in the darkest of places. And so this is my invitation for you. So journaling, science-based, helps you organize your thoughts, helps you reframe your past experiences. It helps you create your future self. So let's think about the future self experience. Let's give this assignment to you. Jot down, if you will, the following. I'm going to ask you in your journal to create your future self. So think about the future that you're striving for. In a year's time, what does that future self person look like? What is he or she doing? What is she exercising every day? What is she eating, she or he? Who are you spending your time with? What kinds of things will you be saying? What are you creating? What are the thoughts you're thinking? What are the practices and habits that you'll be participating in? It's so lovely to be able to share these things with you because if you can see, create it, if you can design it on paper, if you can write it down in your journal and create that reality for yourself, your brain doesn't know the difference. And repeat that journey to yourself every day, as Napoleon Hill did in Think and Grow Rich when he created this statement. This is that basically outlines your future self, and it speaks as if it were already so. So you're speaking into existence the future possibilities of yourself. For example, I would write in my definite purpose statement, um, it is January 2021, right? Let's say, or, or I guess we can say from this, this month forward, March. It is March 2021, and I, Toscarino, am now enjoying a beautiful income from the various sources of my services, and, and I will outline what they are, and I will assign it a number, and I will have experienced any number of the following things, but I've clearly written it down. And so when it's clearly written down, you now have a definite purpose. And then what you do is you can record it on your phone, on voice message yourself, and then put it in your ears when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night. And you hear this purpose, and you hear your story, and your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality and not reality. So if you're saying, yes, I'm going to write another New York Times best-selling book, and I am going to meet Oprah Winfrey, then your mind is going to get to work on doing that. And this journaling process is an excellent place to map all that out. If you don't map it out, you're likely going to fail. There's just so much science to back that you need to put this down concretely on paper. And there's something between the thinking of it to the writing of it on paper that cements the experience for your brain. When I mean cement, I locks it in. And then uh, from Dr. Jo Dr. John Ratty, who wrote Spark, the uh, revolu revolutionary new science of exercise, he said, neurons that fire together wire together, which means the more you practice those activities, 
the stronger your ability gets, the greater your capacity, the greater your ability, the easier it gets. Does that sound good to you? I mean, honestly, to me, I love the idea of it because if you'd asked me to meditate or journal, you know, four or five years ago, forget it. But I have just really gone into the experience of it and love it. So journaling also helps map out for the day. You're going to map out at night. The last thing you do before you go to bed is you're going to map out what it is you're going to do tomorrow. And that takes down all the barriers of what you think you can accomplish the next day. In fact, it takes all the decision-making out of it. How helpful is that, right? When you can say at the night before, as I did last night, all right, I, I'm going to allow myself a little sleep in. I am going to do my meditation. Hydration. I'm going to do my creation. And then I'm going to go live to my audience in certain times. I'm going to disinfect my house and do the laundry. I'm going to do a workout. I'm putting this all in my journal as the last thing I do before I go to bed at night. My brain has it wired in here already. So when I wake up this morning, as I did this morning, it was just a simple, uh-huh, bang, bang, bang. I know what I'm doing. I'm in the rhythm. I'm in the flow. A rapper I will never make. <laughs> it just feels so good to be in the know. Because in the morning when you wake up, very little. So once again, your journal, if you treat this as the absolute gift experience that it is, you can change the entire outcome of your life. And there are many, many successful people who have done this, from Einstein to um, to Steve Jobs to, uh, you know, you name it. If you look on the Forbes list, there's probably no one that isn't journaling. So you want to get there. You want to give this a go. All right. The next exercise you can do is uh, the following. And come back to this. Uh, we'll record it. It will be on all my platforms. And good morning to everyone. I'm so pleased you joined. <laughs> and uh, so. Hello, Michelle. Good morning from Naturally Rooted Michelle. Hello. Hello. So the exercise is what do I, sorry, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Good morning, Kelsey. Hi, baby. That's my daughter. Uh, who do I want to be? What do I want my life to look like? What is my day-to-day -day life like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it flow? What do I for example, in these times now where we have this pandemic, what do I stand for? Am I going to stand for the wellness of all of those who are vulnerable by or am I going to go and break them? Am I going to donate some of my time like like the nurses and the hospitals and the doctors who are on call and doing a magnificent job. And thank you for anyone listening who is in the healthcare field, and that includes my daughter, Rachel. Thank you for all you have done, will do, because we will be called. We will be called to be delivering much, much more in the coming days. I feel like this will go for a little while, forever, but it will be a little bit longer. What are you? What do you stand for? What do you stand for? It's an amazing question. Uh, you can even ask yourself in the privacy of your journal, how much money do I make? What clothing do I wear? How do I interact with others? How do I see my present and my future? What is my purpose? Where do I live? What does that look like for you? Who are my friends? What have I said yes to and what have I said no to? What skills and talents do I have? Tell your story. Tell it. And also, the next thing that I'm going to uh, caution you about journaling is this is not a place for perfection. This is a place to toss it all. It's, um, you know, Bob used to say to me, just vomit it on the page with your writing. Do not edit yourself out of a thought ever. Just let it go. Scribble. Nobody's going to see these things except you. And you'll go back to them at some point. 
and you will learn valuable things about yourself. And you will even, I think I wrote at the beginning of one of my journals, which I frequently do, the very, very beginning of, um, of all of my journals, I write a key message about where I'm going. And in one journal, I, I, said, that I said that I would help my children, I would overcome the crisis and the grief. All of these things have happened. I'm shocked. I'm actually thrilled. And then you'll go back in your journal at a later time. This is an earlier journal, very scribbly, falling apart. I have lots of stuff in it. And I wrote something that really kind of interested me right now because it might be helpful for you. Your hypothalamus is an endocrine. So our endocrine glands are really our hormonal, um, um, if you will, managers of the body, right? So uh, the hypothalamus means I translate what I believe. That's what your hypothalamus does. I translate what I believe, which really is saying what I think I will translate and I will be and I will become. The pineal gland, I see or envision what I receive, which is your clarity, your vision. Hello, Campbell Cross Farm. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us. I'm looking forward to working with you later this uh, summer. Should we, should we all make it out of isolation? <laughs> Thanks for the yellow, too. I love those so much and so many red hearts. The pituitary gland, I hear what I receive. The thyroid, I speak what I receive. The thymus, I clear and transmute what I receive. In other words, I may have received difficult challenges in life, but I receive them and I transmute them into lessons, which is a great learning for me, something that I have gone through. With my heart, I feel what I receive. With the sexual organs, I create and manifest what I receive. When I feel love, I create beauty with my physical body, and I may do that with another person. The adrenal, I hold true to what I receive. Isn't that incredible? I may have to type that up for you a little bit later because I think that's just such a beautiful message. Now, there's a bit of homework with journaling, too, because it's lovely to jot all this down. I would like you also to revisit and check in on yourself. Ask yourself, what things did I say no to so that I could become a good journaling student? What things did I say yes to so that I could be a good journaling student? What in my life was I successful with? Which I can write down, no problem. <laughs> a little bit harder is, well, what did I, you know, what could I have done better? Because we can always do better, right? You to begin to use. Like your, your mental chaos and put it down on paper. Thank you, Donna. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. I want to just scroll up a little bit and see who's here and uh, Terry and Kat. Yes, yeah, sorry about the skipping. And I see, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see Karen. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Um, also, I think this is a time of writing. I think this is going to be a time unprecedented creativity. We are required to go inwards now. I don't want to call it a dormancy period, but we're required to be indoors or closer to the things that stimulate us, that that give us the kundalini. I say kundalini, I mean fire in the belly here, that creative fire. And when we are closer to those things, we see them every day. We breathe life into them. We create stories and pictures around them then we're more willing to flex our creative muscle. And our purpose here on Earth is to be creative, to create. We were born with the creative genes buried within us. And our, our DNA now is being upgraded through this virus. So do not waste the opportunity to take the joy that's in your future. Create music. Do not waste the opportunity to take the joy that's in your future. Create art, paint, sculpture. Don't waste opportunity to take your pen and take those words and craft them into your story and bring them out into the light. In so doing, something about you will have changed and you will share something more with others who need to hear this now. So take the fear out of it and approach it with the openness of creativity. And again, I do feel that the absolute, we're going to see an explosion of creativity. Oh, and I hope so. Finally, one powerful exercise that I would love you to get the habit in is to 
right place of gratitude. If you are struggling in your day with how to fix it, how to make sense of it, where your legs feel like lead, can't even climb out of bed, where you you don't know if your heart is happy or sad, you can't make sense of anything, please start with ten things. In your feet, writing, thank you for my couch, doesn't cut it. <laughs> I can say right now, my heart is full. I'm listening to one of my favorite musicians, Ludovico Einaudi. This music is absolutely breathtaking to me. And when I write, thank you, Ludovico, for your music, I get emotional. And Emotion is everything. Emotion is the language of ourselves. Can you feel that? Emotion is the language of ourselves. And if we can bring those cells into life, into the joy, into the vibration of gratitude, how much we can shift our hearts, how much we can shift the hearts around us who need it so badly now. Be brave. Step out of yourself. Say thanks. Say thank you on your say thank you to the who put his gloves on the shelves for you, made the kill available so you make out to nourish yourself. Say thank you more often. And somebody's coming at you with a negative attitude, not in the attitude of gratitude. Immediately switch into the gratitude game. You say one thank you and they and you go until each of you has shared 10 things you're grateful for. Because at this moment in our lives, I'm actually grateful for this virus. I can say thank you for the virus. It's teaching me to be more raw and open. It's teaching me less to be less of the Toscarino Diva Oxygen cover girl and more of my true self, this, me. And I say thank you for this uh, awareness of the fear and with the more awareness of fear I can help others step out of fear and thank you for the awareness of how clever this is and the upgrade to my DNA that means I need to step up my game too for this creative bonus that we're having right now time where we can take five and go deep within ourselves thank you for being close to my family and my friends thank you for you thank you gratitude with the expectation of nothing in return is the quickest way to shift your energy upward. Experiencing moments of gratitude is powerful. It will shift your day from eh to amazing. Gratitude is the answer. And if you do something out of the sheer willingness of your heart with no expectation of receiving anything in return, that too raises your vibrational energy so high. Expect nothing in return, yet your heart is just absolutely exploding with this openness of love. So I'm going to wind up now. You have a couple of exercises to do for me. I'd love for you to write down the story of your future self. Describe who you are a year from now. Describe what you're eating, what you look like, what you're saying, who you're saying with, who you're hanging around with, what you created, what joys you've had. Write your gratitude. Don't stop at 10. If you're feeling particularly like you need more, go. Sometimes I just fill pages with gratitude. Play beautiful music. Let it fill your heart. Try not to live in fear. If you have the ability to put your hands in soil, earth, put my hands. I was in the garden yesterday. Look at them; they're all chopped up from. But put your hands in the earth. I really feel like we're all going to be called to be planting vegetable gardens, and now is a really good time for us to get out and prepare the earth. Get your hands in the soil. Boost your immune system. No boost support. Let me change my language. Language is everything. And please, please tag someone in this message who you think may benefit from hearing it. Sometimes hearing it from a neutral voice, someone new, helps to change their attitude about Okay, we can be a system disruptor and an attitude buster. That would be your job. I thank you so much. Share with me your moments, your gratitudes, 
your blessings. I'd love to hear it on this. I want to take some messages, and I will be answering you back. I wish you a blessed, blessed weekend. Later today, I'll be doing a Facebook Live about sourdough, where I share my fails and my sort of wins. <laughs> That'll be fun. And tomorrow, I'll be doing a meditation session. Thank you. God bless. And you away again with the notion that your journaling is part of it. All right. And that's Instagram. And now for Facebook. Thanks for joining. There we go. <laughs> Get Chinese. Peace.